Hey, sister friends, thanks for joining me. I have this Lane Cedar chest that had a beautiful veneer design on it that turned to crap over the years. It, it still works and it's still a nice uh, cedar chest on the inside. I'm in my new studio, so I don't know where things are. So it's all cedar in there. And, but the outside needs something. I haven't been able to decide what to do. I was gonna use silk and sun-kissed on there, but silk needs a, a good smooth surface. And you can see where some of the veneer was on here. And I just got to thinking I may end up needing to distress it later or something like that. So I just wanted to use a paint that was gonna be friendly for that. This is Dixie Belle Buttercream. Just opened it, stirred it up. Very, very similar color to the Sun Kissed. So we're gonna slap this coat on here. We have a little bit of a loose piece of wood right here and I'm gonna just fix it later. Right now I'm not gonna let it slow me down from the painting. I'm using a synthetic bristle brush because that's what I have here available. It's the Dixie Bell FL, which is like a flat large. Gonna mist this thing up. I know it's thirsty. And then there's a good bit of water coming out of my brush. Let me get that on there. I had considered staining this, but I dropped some paint on it the other day and didn't want to have to start over. So we are just gonna So just because you find, when you find an old piece and the veneer or the wood part on the outside of it is all tore up looking, that doesn't mean it's the end of the world and you have to throw away the piece. Sometimes you do. I mean, sometimes I put raised stencils over them. Sometimes I just use Dixie mud and um, fill in any damaged areas and then, you know, paint back over it. Or sometimes we just strip all of that veneer off. And then underneath is a high quality solid wood piece of furniture. Okay, I'm going to continue my way around here, around this piece raise this up to show you. Ooh. Then I'm gonna come back with like a one inch brush and go around to get this under part. And then I'll be back with the second coat. It has now two coats of Dixie Belle Buttercream. And then last night before I went to bed, I decided to put a coat of Silk Hampton Olive around the bottom. So I still have another coat of that to go on, but it won't even require any kind of top coat or anything, so that'll be fine. And I want to make this thing really cute, but move it on out of here. I mean, I'm, I'm here to flip furniture, right? So I decided to use a transfer. Brought myself three to choose from. Floral Romance, which is gorgeous. And it comes in four sheets that look like that. I love those big flowers. I love this one. It's called uh, Field of Flowers. And I'm absolutely going to use it in the very near future. But I decided to go with Magnolia Garden. Um, magnolias are the Louisiana state flower where I'm at here. They're very pretty and delicate. 
and honestly I'm thinking that the person this is gonna attract there's two a couple of people that this would attract as far as like my end buyer and that's gonna be if I do it well maybe three or four but if I do it say in a farmhouse style and it becomes somebody's coffee table or we could do something like a steampunk or something like that and have it be somebody's um, coffee table but I, I'm envisioning it being at the foot of the bed in somebody's guest room and most of the people who gosh this sounds terrible the Lane Cedar chests were a big deal you know many years ago more than they are now correct me if I'm wrong maybe they're a big thing now too and I just don't know about it because I fell out of fashion <laughs> but anyway I think that I feel in my heart that, you know, it's gonna be a little old lady from Pasadena who only drives her car to church on Sunday who's gonna want it. And so that's who I wanna have in mind. And magnolias are beautiful and they're romantic and they're feminine and they re represent something here in Louisiana, you know, where I'm at. They mean something to us because it's our state flower. So that's what I decided to do. So. There you go, my explanation. And if it sounds like something old and bad, because I didn't know any better, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. We got the stick to rub it on with. And instructions. And four sheets come with this. And part of why I didn't use the floral romance, which is what I envisioned for this to begin with, was I didn't think, I just couldn't conceptualize quick enough in my mind what to do. I still see it with the big roses and things on there, but because of where they connect each other, the sizes they are, and the amount of cutting out I would have to do, and back to wanting to hurry up and flip this piece, I decided to go with something I thought would sell well and something that I thought would um, be easy for me to cut up and put in different places. So, I absolutely love this big sheet. I'm just going to show you the sheets, then I'm going to cut out the ones that I think I'm going to use, and then we'll come back and decide on placement. This has a nice, oh my gosh, swag. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this has a nice swag and it has a, a nice big blossom and a nice curved one. So that definitely is in the running there. This one has a nice big blossom with separated leaves, small set of blossoms and some cotton. I don't know if I'm gonna use cotton on here or not. So I'll probably just cut out the magnolias and maybe the stick down here. And here's, these almost look like, these look more like gardenias to me than they do magnolias because they're so small. There's a couple of decent blossoms facing in different directions and leaves and sticks and all that. So I'm gonna cut out all the blossoms off of these three pages. Save this because I don't know. I mean, it might could go up top. I'm not gonna say no to anything right this minute. But what I, I do know is I'm gonna distress it a little bit. I'm gonna use some Dixie Dirt on it. There's other things that I'm gonna do and I just don't know whether having, whether this is the piece to have one that has a solid background on it or not. Could change my mind, we'll see. Brainstorming here, y'all. This could be centered on the top and then I could come back with a maybe French linen or something that's very similar to the background here and do the rest of this and then distress it. I'm gonna go back to my original idea. Terry, <laughs> Terry, go back to what you're supposed to be doing, flipping this one fast. See you as soon as I get these cut out. I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer just for a second. There was also, I absolutely love this one, but it is brighter green and has some yellows and stuff in here. It's really just a lot more detailed than the rest of the blossoms. So I'm not gonna use that on the outside. I may put it on the inside, which would tie it all together. 
or maybe on a canvas afterward to be a staging thing to go with this. I cut out the cotton. I'm saving it for later. And then here I have piles. I ended up with two big blossoms. I'll probably put one in a main place here and one in a main place here. I ended up with one, two, three, four, just random blossom pieces. You know, like the little faces are looking different directions and things like that. And things will go with them. And as far as the smaller blossoms, this one's kind of a medium, but it still fits in. We have that, and I've got that along with the swag, which in some instances may look good right there, but I don't think this is one of them. And then, let's see, two more of the little ones that have more blossoms, but they're smaller. Random leaves, eight or nine leaves. We'll put those on after. And then we have sticks, branches, whatever you wanna call it. One, two, three, four smaller ones. What I'm telling myself right now is make it quick, Terry. You want to get this done. Think of the movement from here to here. I don't like it to be too straight. I don't like things too angular. We don't have, I didn't cut out a lot, but what I don't want is one little random piece here and one little random piece here to where it's not connected in some kind of way. If after we put this on, we feel like it needs more, we'll put some of the cotton on there or something. Okay, right now we have a larger and a smaller, so I'm gonna pick my focal area to be here on bottom. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of tape for right now and stick everything kinda where I think I want it. This really, really helps me to make decisions. <laughs> make decisions faster, maybe. This is our main one. It's gonna have leaves coming off of it. It's gonna have sticks coming out of it. So we gotta decide what's the face what's gonna make it, what position can we put it in that'll lead our eye over here. All the little curves and bends and things on the flower petals, that's what helped make that, this helps to make that decision. Since it has this rounded shape, this curvature to it, it makes it a great design element, but it also limits, because I wish I could flip it over and have it pointing in this way right now, but that's not the way it's shaped, so not the way I'm gonna do it. I find it much better to come through and do things like this than rub one and then decide, rub one and then decide because I can move all of this later. You could wait on this part. The reason I'm doing it right now is this depth of color I need to stabilize this, I feel like it's gonna come from the leaves. There's a couple of them that are more of a brown color than a green color. I feel like it's gonna be important to have those here to visually weight it down too. So I'm gonna stick those in here. It's definitely a lot more weighted down. I'm gonna save the last two leaves for in case I need to add color anyplace else. I still have this swag if I decide to about as much as I love it, I'm probably gonna cut it off right there, right there, and have the three different pieces. You could also, I would recommend at this point, take a picture of where everything's at, and then you can stop and look at that picture, and you'll see things in that picture that you don't see in real life. Plus, it helps you know where everything's at, because I'm gonna have to pull some of it up in order to continue to put some of it down. If this is a, a good tip too, it scares me a little bit because I'm thinking, oh, it's not gonna adhere good. I'm gonna burnish it with my finger afterward anyway. See how I'm lifting this up a little bit? If you sort of lift before you stick, rub, just make sure you get those edges really good. It goes on way faster. I'm committed.
I'm gonna keep rubbing all the rest of them in the same fashion and I'll see you when it's done. One more thing here real quick. I moved these up out of the way, sort of in the area that they go down here. But you can also leave this little piece taped and pull off your backing for at least for your main piece so that it goes exactly where you want it and not have to move it like I did on the other one there. One thing first, and let me just show you this. I don't think you can hear it, but I'm gonna put this here. And uh, maybe you can hear it. The deal is, now if you could, now you can't. When you shake, the, you need to shake this up, the Easy Piece of Spray Wax, you need to shake, shake it up until you don't hear it anymore. Then it's ready. And as you're using it, do the same thing. Every once in a while, shake it, and if you hear it or feel it moving in there, I'm not gonna wax this bottom part yet. I'm gonna try not to spray any on there because I still need to put another coat on there. But this is the fastest curing top coat uh, that Dixie Belle has. It says six cures in six hours, dries in 30 minutes, and you can reapply if you want to. And it just gives a very low luster, actually kind of matte look to it, nothing. So that's it. And I'm going right over the transfer and everything. Just want you to get that all on here. This is just a, a, an applicator pad. And what this does is sort of seal those pores in the paint. You know, whenever you have a chalk and mineral paint, it is porous. I mean, that's the benefit of it. So this seals that up so that what I put on here next can sit on the surface a little bit and not dig down into all those grooves. I put just a little bit of Dixie Dirt in earth in this little cup it would be easy for me to handle and I wouldn't chance contaminating my whole batch or something. I grabbed a handful of just cheap artist brushes. Got me easy peasy spray wax. Hear it, need shaking again. And the applicator pad still. So just gonna do a small area at a time. up there. Give it a second. Kind of want some of that in. Then I'm just grabbing the brush. If you want, you can kind of wet the tips with your wax. You can do this with your regular wax and all that too. This is just easy peasy and that's what I'm into. Everywhere that paint had an issue for a second is getting filled up with this dirt now. I like to go up it this way instead of that way. I just feel like it comes out prettier in the end. And that's just kind of staining this a little bit, but not too, too much, but enough to give it that aged look. One thing I want to show here too, is if you do this with your applicator, it's gonna, you're gonna be rubbing hard here and not so much here, and it's gonna leave wider streaks. So you're wanting your hand, you could either do it the wide way or this way, but you want your hand to take up the whole thing and not let it bend like that. This little area right here, that's something I'm gonna wanna age around too. So I'm gonna stop and do that now and then pull the two together. Where's my dirt? There it is. A little goes a long, long way too. Go ahead and get this outer edge. Take my 
old sponge. Get her started. I love it. All right, I'm just gonna do the same thing to the edges that I just did to the top in the front, and I'll see you shortly.